everybody, uh, today I'd like to take a look at the Blob 2's Dead Zones, and really mainly for the right stick uh, for the camera, because uh, as you might be able to see, this is a kind of colossal dead zone. Uh, it's, uh, I'd see, I think this is the first I've seen that's this large, so uh, this is a little elliptical, so horizontally it's about 80%, and vertically it's about 90%. Why they chose uh, this large of dead zone, I don't know, but uh, uh, that's how big it is to see you can make all this movement without any any camera movement occurring. Um, the camera restricts diagonal movement, so as you can see, I can point at a very obvious angle like this, and I'm moving perfectly left. Uh, this entire blue region um, just locks locks you to the horizontal axis. Um, is until I break into this green region where you start seeing diagonal movement occur. So that's why uh, the vertical uh, movement started. Um, horizontal uh, movement is restricted along the vertical axis. So as you can see here, you have to move outside of this range before you start seeing uh, horizontal movement occur. Now I don't know why they set up a dead zone this large and uh, while the camera isn't uh, really all that important in this game, you just using it mainly horizontally to follow Blob around. Uh, vertically, it's uh, quite limited. As you can see, uh, you don't have much of a range, even if you, um, uh, you're working around a ledge like this. So, um, so this doesn't really affect things too much. However, uh, it is strange why they just wouldn't use they couldn't use a smaller dead zone for it, or a uh, different implementation, like a square dead zone, uh, to achieve the same same thing. Uh, I mean, speaking of which, the movement uses about a 37-38% uh, um, rounded square dead zone. So this is made with uh, laying a circular dead zone on top of a, a square dead zone. So you can see the blob will start moving once I break out of this region. Uh, square dead zones restrict diagonal movement around the axes, so you can see that I can uh, he'll be moving perfectly straight despite these bobbing motions. Perfectly right and perfectly left. It isn't until you break into these green regions where you start seeing diagonal movement occur, and um, this is a little more obvious when tracing the dead zone where you can see when diagonal movement is occurring and when you're locked um, to an axis. Now this uh, this dead zone is large itself, um, but uh, you, uh, you don't really need to make any kind of precise adjustments, uh, so this doesn't really affect gameplay at all. I typically advocate against uh, restricting diagonal movement because um, I don't especially in this kind of game, uh, because full diagonal movement would work perfectly fine, and uh, restricting it like this kind of creates a disconnect between uh, the directions you can point the stick uh, versus where the uh, character is moving. But of course, uh, the game as is is perfectly playable. I just really wanted to point out this, um, uh, this camera dead zone, because uh, they use a square dead zone for uh, the movement, but uh, they probably could use a square dead zone for the camera too, and or just an identical uh, same dead zone they're using for movement for the camera uh, to achieve the same thing. But uh, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.